What is up everybody? We are back over here at the Fixer Upper. We have this kitchen completely demoed now and what we need to go ahead and do is start building the pony wall, the half wall, the stem wall, whatever you want to call it, so that we can run the electrical up into it. When I dropped the full wall that was separating the kitchen from the living room, we lost a few switches, a couple of outlets, the thermostat for my baseboard heater so it's nice and cold up here now. So we need to go ahead and rebuild this wall because over here I'll be able to pull a couple of runs of electrical off and run it up into that wall and replace all of those features and take these wires and kill them. One of the main issues that people tend to run in with these half walls is they aren't very stable. They tend to shake a lot. And so we're going to make sure that that is not the case for this wall. I hate for somebody to fall on the wall and it falls over and you know, that you know, that just sound, that sounds like a lot of work. So I don't, I don't really want to deal with that. So what we'll be doing is actually cutting out part of this subfloor. That way I can access it with my framing studs and attach the studs to the floor joist and that will make sure that it doesn't shake and that it is super sturdy. Already gone ahead and pulled all my measurements for this wall. I want two 24 inch cabinets as well as an 18 inch cabinet. So that equals 66 inches. I know that I'm gonna have about a half inch overhang for the countertops, which brings it to 67. And then we're gonna have drywall which brings the wall to 68 inches wide. Also want it to be even with the walls that are coming down from the hallway here. All that said let's go ahead start marking up some wood to cut and I need to go ahead and rip out this section of the subfloor right here. We don't want to cut out the section where the bottom plate is going to be. We just want to cut to the inside of it. That way I can see where the flooring joists are at. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and make a couple of plunge cuts with a circular saw. Tear that puppy out of here. See what we get. We've now got the subfloor part cut out. That cut was super sloppy, but we're not gonna worry about that for right now. What matters is that we can see the floor joists here in between each spot. So what we'll want to go ahead and do, so you can see the marking right here for where my bottom plate of this wall is gonna be. What we can do is take the measurement of this stud right here, notch in where that's gonna be, and attach it to the side of this joist. And that will give us a lot of stability and a lot of strength. To do the notching, I'm just going to use this battery powered jigsaw. Now I went ahead and already made the marks, the lines that I need to use. Just using a spare piece of the stud right here. Take it, make your mark on both sides because I don't want to cut out this entirely because that will help add to the strength for this pony wall. Alright, we got everything all notched out here, so I want to go ahead and start cutting the studs that we're going to be using for this wall. We have four floor joists that we'll be able to connect to here, so I'm going to be cutting four studs to be able to attach them. With the cutting all done now, we have our top plate, our bottom plate, our four short studs, and our four longer studs that will mount to the floor joists. To go ahead and secure this wall all together and make it super rigid, I'm gonna be using these number nine, two and a half inch screws with the T25 tip. Let's go ahead and get the bottom plate secure real quick.
We've now got the top plate secured in place. I don't want to tighten that down too much right now because I don't have all of the studs run for this thing and I haven't checked to see if it's plumb and level quite yet. I can go ahead and cut out the channels for this bottom plate right here. That will then allow me to slide in my longer studs over here, down there, and attach to the top right here. We got all of the longer studs now attached to the top plate here. So we're gonna run downstairs real quick and attach the lower part to the floor joist. All right, as you can see, we have our four longer studs right here hanging down. Now that we got the longer studs now attached to the floor joist, we're gonna run a couple of cross screws from this bottom plate into the longer stud, and that should secure everything, make it super strong, and we'll be good to go. Well, with everything cross screwed, this wall is officially complete. And it's holding up pretty darn strong. I can't really shake it too much. It'll be even more supported when we have all the cabinets and the countertop over on the front side. This thing will definitely not move then. But right now, since we need to go ahead and run the electrical from that far wall over up into this wall, I'm gonna leave this floor spot right open so hopefully the old man doesn't fall through. What? <laughs> So with that, we're gonna go ahead and call it a night. It feels great to officially have this thing built. It's another step forward in the progress of putting this thing back together. <laughs>